I spent 100 days in Pixelmon. I joined the Enchant MC server and had to pick between a normal or custom starter. I checked out the custom ones and decided to go with Riolu. I also had to decide if I wanted him shiny or not shiny and I ended up picking the latter. My goals for this video is to complete 10% of the Pokédex, defeat 5 trainers, and to defeat the Shaft Gym. Also, if you guys want to play, just click the link below to visit this website. Install this mod pack, click the Technic Launcher link, and then scroll to the bottom and download the Windows version. Log in with your Minecraft account, click Mod Packs, type in Enchant MC, and then install. You'll be all set to play on the server, and if you already have the mod, feel free to use the IP. Anyway, I entered the spawn and immediately found a team full of pink Pokemon. I did not expect to see that when I came on here, and I don't think my little buddy did either. He's a little munchkin right now, but pretty soon he'll be like 5 inches taller. I'm actually training him right now by letting him run around and explore the server with me. I can increase his happiness by doing this, and I can evolve him once it reaches 220. I also have to evolve him in the daytime, so hopefully I remember to do that. Another way to increase happiness is to fight other trainers. So I asked in chat if anybody wants to fight, and luckily for me, someone had just joined the server when I said that. I got into a battle with the Sans guy and was hoping I could beat up his little penguin. Well things didn't go as planned and I ended up losing my first battle. He won his first fight on the server and it was against the owner, which is kinda crazy. Now it's time for me to head to the Poke Center and think about my loss while I heal my Pokemon. On top of that, this guy decided to flex all his cool Pokemon on me, which made this day even better. Now as I healed up my Pokemon, this guy looked like he wanted my attention. He wanted to trade me something, but I only had one Pokemon. Plus it was my starter, and you can't just give up your starter like that. I ditched the guy and headed back to spawn to see Sans again, who's pretty much my rival at this point. I wanted to fight other people too, so I asked them to fight with weak Pokemon, but that ended up backfiring on me. This guy had a level 5 Celesteela and crushed me with it. After that, the guy who wanted to trade came back, and I thought I might as well see what he has to offer. He wanted to give me this cool looking Hone Edge, which I'm not gonna lie, was a really tempting offer. I can't give up my starter like that, but I will take this free pickaxe that he smacked me with earlier. Now I was just about to head out of spawn, but another new player joined the server. This guy also had a piplup, and I was scared I'd get crushed again, but this time I didn't, and I actually won my first battle. It felt good to win, and that fight gave me confidence to fight this Gengar, but then I realized I can't even damage him with any of my moves. It was a sad fight, and I was really hoping people weren't watching, but it looks like everyone was. Now I'm getting a little tired of people showing off their cool Pokemon, so I think it's time that I finally get out of the spawn and start my adventure. I warped to the tutorial area of the server, where I found some basic commands, and to get started, I have to type in slash RTP. I teleported to this forest, which is honestly the best place to spawn in. As I chopped down some logs, I immediately found this Turtwig. Turtwig. This would be an awesome first catch, so I prepped up my Riolu for battle. He took me out super easily, but thankfully with my donor rank, I can slash Pokey heal and keep battling him over and over. I lost count of how many times I fought this guy, but I know for sure I was going a bit mental. This Churchwick started to really mess with my mind, and it looks like he teleported me to another dimension, or I'm just going crazy. I decided to get out of that forest and explore this little village instead. This guy built his own shop here, which I think is a really cool idea. He even made his own stadium, and it looks pretty decent. I love the idea of living in a town, so I asked if I could build near someone, and luckily Spacebrug said yes. I typed in slash TPA Spacebrug and waited for him to accept it. I teleported on top of the snow mountain, which sounds like a pretty cool place to live in. I immediately found Leaf Broth here, the guy I fought back at spawn, and I also found Sans here, who was the first guy I fought on the server. I'll be living with the people who started at the same time as me, and I'll also be living next to my rival, which is kinda crazy. I then started to clear out some land, so that I can build my masterpiece of a home. I might not have a lot of materials, but I'll just work with what I have. A lot of people in the past have made fun of my builds, and I honestly can't understand why. I mean, it doesn't look that bad, right? Okay, maybe it's not that great, since Riolu does not seem to like it. I'm still going to set this as my home, so that I can teleport to it whenever I want. I'm also going to take the claiming shovel in my inventory to claim the land around my house. I've now made it impossible for you guys to destroy my home. I'm looking at you, Leaf. Speaking of Leaf, I actually found him fighting the Zubat. It looks like he already caught his first Pokemon, and I would've too if I caught that gosh darn Turtwig. Seeing him form his team made me feel a little behind, but I did have an idea of who I wanted to catch. 
I typed in slash pwiki larvitar to open up his wiki so that I could find out where he spawns. The wiki gave me so much information and I'll be sure to use it a lot throughout the journey. I checked his spawn info and it looks like he's a common Pokemon in the extreme hills. I was heading on over there, but then I ran into this guy that dropped me some candy. I haven't done anything to deserve it, so I gave it back to him before realizing that he didn't take no for an answer. I tried running away from him, but he found other ways to catch up to me. Moments later, I turned around and didn't see him behind us, so I thought Riolu and I were in the clear. But then out of nowhere, he came riding on the back of a Latios and at that point I knew I was beat. I ended up telling him to give it to someone else and I think that did the trick. Moving on, as I was training, someone in chat asked me if I was staying for the tournament. Apparently there's a tournament coming soon, which I'm clearly not ready for. It does sound pretty interesting though, so I think I'll just come and spectate. Now after defeating the Sentret, I got a couple of tokens. By visiting the token shop, I can purchase some crate keys with them, but it looks like it'll cost a fortune. I can also purchase some rare candy, which I'll definitely end up doing, and I can also save up and buy a Master Ball. After the token shop, I also wanted to check out the Cerberus Pokemart as well, but it looks like this guy wanted to show me his Pokemon first. I'm really hoping I get a Legendary, or even a Shiny by the end of this run, but I don't think it'll happen. Anyway, I checked out what the Cerberus shop had to offer, but didn't buy anything since I don't have any money yet. The first thing I'll buy will probably be Ultra Balls, since I ran out of the ones I had. Now I should be looking for that Larvitar, but I kinda got distracted at spawn. I lost every fight while I was here, which wasn't much of a surprise. It was kind of a surprise to see this guy have a Rainbow Cresselia, and I wonder how he got that. These people have been on the server for some time, so I also wonder what their bases look like. On a side note, this has to be the most terrifying Pokemon I've ever seen. Anyway, I actually got invited to come check out this guy's base. I explored his breeding area, and just by the looks of it, I can already tell this place will be epic. I even found this home that was underground, but looks super cool from up above. There were multiple homes here, so I guess I'll take the time and explore the rest of the village. I entered this one house with a room full of chests, and they put signs on the chests that make everything super organized. This is what I should be doing, but I honestly prefer the method of just stuffing everything into one chest. I also need to up my building skills so that they can be on par with something like this. I had no idea you could add couches to this mod, but apparently you can. I also forgot to put a bed in my house, but to be fair, I don't think I could have since my house is already super tiny. Man, I really hope Riolu didn't see that. After that, I visited one of my moderator's bases and this definitely looked like somewhere I'd want to live in. It's nice to have multiple spawn points, so I decided to set a home here with my mod's name, only to find out 5 seconds later that he didn't want people setting homes here. Well, can't do anything about that, but on a side note, look at the size of this thing. Even Riolu's got his jaw dropped just looking at him. Alright, visiting people's bases has been super fun, but I think it's time to get serious now. It's time to stop looking at other people's teams and start focusing on my goals. This guy on top of this pig had a trainer tag in front of his name, which is what I want to get, but I have to complete 10% of the Pokédex for that. It's a bit of a challenge, but I'm sure I can do it. Well, I can't really do it when I'm distracted by these people showing me their villages. Just like the first village, this place also had a little market area, which I think is a fantastic idea. In the future, I would love for players to have their own shop warps so that there can be some thriving businesses on the server. These guys put a lot of effort into building this place, so I already feel like it would be a popular warp. The people here are really friendly and they brought me on a tour to this pretty cool looking basement. They were also kind enough to provide me with a cozy little room, which I personally love since I finally have my own bed now. I eventually got out and a message appeared about a pokey party starting soon. It's an extremely rare event where the server is kind enough to give every player that's online a random shiny. As we waited for the countdown to end, I crossed my fingers for something cool and my wish was granted. I was more than happy with what I got, mainly because I have a second Pokemon now. I then came to spawn and checked out what shiny everyone else got. Okay, some of them are kind of making me jealous now. The best one here was probably this shiny Charizard. But I'm still happy with the Pokemon I got, and I'll be even happier when I catch the Shinx. I wanted an electric type on my team, and I chose him since I'm a big fan of Luxray. In other news, I'm also about to evolve my Riolu as well. He finally evolved into Lucario, and learned his signature move. It's also pretty awesome that he has an animation for it as well, even when he uses it in fights. The move is also good against rock types, which made fighting and catching this level 29 Larvitar so much easier. The team is growing pretty rapidly, and I'll have a full squad in no time. 
I was extremely fortunate to find this guy at such a high level since it only took one rare candy to evolve him into Pupitar. I like that things are moving quickly now, but I also have to take some time and figure out who I want to catch next. Just as I was about to do that, a message appeared in chat about a tournament. I heard about it earlier, so I thought I might as well warp to the place and check it out. It looks like there's a lot of people waiting to see it, so I guess I'll stay and watch it as well. A lot of people were showing off their Pokemon, and it was getting a little crazy. I would too, but unfortunately, I have nothing to show off. Also, you know this tournament's going to be insane when there's three Ultra Necrozmas here. I ran into one of the helpers who entered in the tournament, and he showed me his gigantic bug Pokemon. It turns out he's using an all-bug team, which is very interesting, so I'll definitely be rooting for him to win. Anyway, I think the tournament is going to start soon, so I went ahead and grabbed my front row seat. I thought I was going to get a nice view up here, but I got a different view instead. I told Mr. Duck that I couldn't see, and he gave me a better view, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I tried switching seats, but I don't think I was welcomed here. Anyway, the tournament started, and I already saw Glitching crush people with his giant spider. I didn't have faith in this Pokemon, but I forgot that he deals with fire types pretty easily. He also had a Volcarona who was very good against those super defensive steel types. I didn't think he'd be able to take down this Dragonite, but he did using a Z-move. He did run into some trouble when faced off with legendaries, but his spider always came in clutch when he needed it to. No matter what people threw at him, the spider just could not get killed. It felt the same way with his other Pokemon too, they were just so impossible to kill. It's either that, or these people are just using the wrong Pokemon against him. Now up next was a very intense battle between Glitch and Luna, who was one of the mods. Things started to really heat up after Luna had taken down the Butterfly Man. He was also able to take down Spider-Man, so things were looking real bad for Glitch. However, he did take down Luna's Gengar, with only a little bit of HP left. I don't know how he did it, but the Batman somehow stood his ground against this Ninetales. The Batman ended up dying though, but he made sure to take down the Ninetales with him. All Luna had left was his Gligu, which did a decent amount of damage to Metal Man, but Metal Man was able to do some back. Gligu finally took down the Metal Man, which left Glitch no other choice but to send out the Big Man. These were both of their last Pokemon, so things got real intense. Gligu did some major damage on the Big Man, but the Big Man ended up prevailing. Now the final matches are about to start, and I'm already pumped. The final round is between Post and Glitching, and if either of them win, they get $100. The match had begun and this Gengar had already brought the Spider-Man down to 1 HP. Glitch swapped out Spider-Man for Shiny Man, but when he saw Regilecki, he swapped out for Metal Man. Both of them constantly switch out their Pokemon to the point where it was getting kind of ridiculous. But this is the grand final though, so these players definitely know what they're doing. The Batman definitely put in some work by taking down this Gengar and the Regilecki by using his powerful move, Bug Buzz. The big man who we've constantly seen throughout this tournament was no match for the Landorus, but the Butterfly Man was after using that Z-move again. Post actually had a Volcarona himself, so I was very interested to see how this would go. However, the Butterfly Man was way too powerful, leaving Post to send out his very last Pokemon. Unfortunately, there was a battle bug, but Glitch won by default since he had about 3 or 4 Pokemon left. Congrats to Glitch though, I'm sure he's very happy and I hope he spends that money well. I really didn't think an all bug team would be that strong, but I guess I was completely wrong. I wanted to personally congratulate Glitch, but I ended up receiving a letter that just so slightly threw off my mood. Now that the tournament is over, it was time to get back on the grind and the first thing I did was vote for the server. I got 7 vote crate keys by doing so and got 15 rare candy on the first spin. With every vote, I also got some money and some tokens, so I'm glad I won't have an empty wallet anymore. Not to mention, I can do this every day and it only takes me less than a minute. With the candy I got from the crates, I gave some to Lucario, and I also gave some to Shanks so that he could evolve into Luxio. I actually got a rank up key from evolving him, which I can then use on the rank up crate. The rank up crate offers mostly vote keys, but I somehow was extremely lucky and ended up getting a rare crate key. I can check what's inside the rare crate by left clicking on it, and it looks like all the prizes here are pretty good, but I'm really hoping I don't get a shovel or something. Oh hey look, it's my rival again. His Piplup is now an Empoleon, so it looks like he's been training a lot. He was higher in level, but my starter is still a counter to his. I thought I had it in the bag after that, but he ended up wrecking me. 
I needed to train more, but I also felt like I needed to fill up the squad. I got a Swinub and a Magikarp, who I think are great additions to the team. I also beat my first raid den, and I plan on giving this large candy to the Magikarp. I threw the candy in his mouth, and as he flopped around, he magically transformed into this beautiful water beast. Later on, I ventured into the extreme hills and actually found a Charmander. Once I caught him, I decided to put him on the team. I'm gonna have to replace Lombrey for Charmander, but on the bright side, I might plan to give this guy to someone. I continued training after that and evolved my Swinub into Pilliswine and my Charmander into Charmeleon. I love how my team is really diverse and I think I'll be sticking with these guys for the rest of the video. Now I checked the Pokédex again and it looks like I just need to complete 8% more to get the trainer rank. Just like P-Wiki, the dex gives me a lot of info, and it only shows Pokemon that I haven't caught yet, which is extremely useful if I wanted to complete the entire dex. Another great way to complete the dex would be to just buy Pokemon off the global trading station using slash GTS. People will pretty much sell anything here, but the one thing I kept my eye on was this EXP all. Training my team would be so much easier with it, but I can't afford it, so I'll have to settle with a lucky egg for now. I checked my balance after using Slash Bell, and it definitely did a number on it. It sucks being broke, but on the bright side, at least the move relearners are free to use. I checked the P Wiki again, and it told me that Mamoswine needs ancient power, so thanks to the move relearner, I was able to do that. After catching this Arbok in the savannah, Pilloswine leveled up and evolved into this very small woolly mammoth. Right after that, I encountered my very first ultimate boss. I'm not sure why I tried to fight him, since he wiped out my team and I couldn't even do a little bit of damage. I do plan on fighting a couple in the future, but right now, I'm more focused on evolving these guys. As I'm doing this, I'll also make sure to fill up the decks as well. Now I found out that one of the best ways to train is to just fight NPC trainers. They spawn pretty much anywhere, and they also give thousands of dollars. The GTS is by far the best way to make money, but this is probably the best way for newer players. Another great way to train is by fighting raid dens. Not only are the Pokemon in the dens high level, but they can also give me a lot of candy. Pipachar will take some time to evolve, but Charmeleon on the other hand is almost there. Now dens are great for leveling up, but they're also great for making and saving money. They also drop berries and TR moves, which cost thousands of dollars in the shop. Now another great method of training is to just fight high level Pokemon I find in the wild. After doing that for a while, my Charmeleon had finally evolved into Charizard, and my Luxio had finally evolved into Luxray. The last Pokemon left to evolve is my Pupitar, but that's going to take some time. While I was at spawn, I also evolved other people's Pokemon as well. I'm a huge fan of Gengar, and I was thinking of just keeping him for myself. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? It's not like this guy can stop me or take him from my team. But then again, he did try to threaten me, so I decided to play it safe and give him his Gengar back. I went back to training after that, and decided to fight this 5 star Quagsire Den. This guy ended up giving me 5 XL candy, which equates to 150,000 experience. That might just be a little too OP, but honestly, I'm not complaining. Now that my team's fully evolved, I feel like it's time to battle some trainers. I fought the Mayor of Shroomville, and I would say the battle went well for the most part. He had a very strong team, but he kept using the wrong Pokemon. I used a flying move against his fighting type and won my second trainer battle on the server. After defeating the mayor, he actually rewarded me with a new home in his village and as I stepped in, I immediately loved the place. The rent is also free, so it looks like I'll have to take my stuff from the old home and move into this one. On the same night, the mayor was also giving a speech to all the citizens of the town. I'm still a newcomer here, but I guess town hall meetings are a common thing. It turns out the mayor was angry tonight, and he told us not to let certain people enter this town. One of the people he listed actually messaged me and tried to expose the mayor. Maybe there really is something going on between the mayor and the officials that the public is unaware of. Another guy that the mayor put on the ban list spoke out as well and even claimed that he found the city. It appears that these guys used to be friends, but now I guess they're enemies. I decided to not get involved and fought this guy named Locke instead. This guy had a whole team full of legendaries, and of those legendaries, he even had an Arceus. The Arceus had a ground plate, so I thought I could kill it with Gyarados, but he ended up one-shotting it. This battle was going horribly, and I only had one Pokemon left. I somehow beat his Kyogre though, and was still satisfied that I took down two legendaries. Right after that, another guy wanted to fight me, and something told me that he had all legendaries too. And as a matter of fact, I was completely right. 
This battle actually would have been winnable if my Tyranitar had already learned a dark move. Compared to the last fight though, I did a whole lot better in this one. I took out most of his team, but unfortunately, Regigigas was too powerful. I asked him how many he had left, and he only had 2 legendaries left, which isn't that bad. I'm getting sick of losing though, so I figured it's time to speed up my training. Don't ask me why, but I decided to pay 30k for an EXP all to the guy who threatened to kill me earlier. Training becomes much faster with this item plus the lucky egg, and I'll get my team to level 100 in no time. Now back at Shroomville, there was some talk about us going into war. Apparently the mayor of this town declared war on the intruders, and wanted to build an army to go fight them. However, the hype quickly died down after the staff took matters into their own hands. That's understandable, but I can't say I wasn't excited for an all out Pixelmon war. Anyway, now that that's over, it's time to get back on the grind and catch as many Pokemon as I can. I'm already halfway to my goal, so it looks like I'm making great progress. While on the hunt, I fought a trainer who was actually on my level. His best Pokemon was Lucario that my Charizard had no problem taking down. I've beaten a total of 3 trainers since I came on the server, and I also now have a little helper. He gave me his balls, so I wrote him a little letter which he seemed very happy about. Just by being around, he helped spawn more Pokemon and he also helped me find a lot of dens as well. He's done so much for me and I haven't really done anything for him, so I guess it's time to give him something good. Now I don't have a lot of cool Pokemon, but I do have the shiny from the Poke Party. I gifted him the Lombre using Slash Poke Gift, and he seemed pretty excited about it which makes me happy. Now back in Shroomville, I encountered another player who was relatively easy to fight. I took him down without a problem and got my 4th win against the trainer. Now before I finish off that goal, I decided to take some time and check out people's bases again. This is by far the coolest base I've seen, and within seconds of just being here, I felt like I was in paradise. I can tell that this guy has been on the server for a while, and is a pretty good builder too. I was told that this place was under construction, but I can't wait to see what the final product looks like. My favorite part of this place would have to be this modern style home. I always wanted to build something like this, but I never had the talent for it. Now that place was insane, but what I'm about to show you might just be the craziest thing I've seen on the server. This guy decided to make the biggest storage area ever made in Pixelmon. And that was just one side of the building, on the other side is the exact same thing. Apparently this guy wants to make a business out of this, which to me sounds like a brilliant idea. For some reason, every time I play this mod, my chests get filled to the brim with junk and I constantly have to make new chests. The same problem happens with everyone, so I'm thinking there will be a lot of demand for this. Now I've had a lot of fun exploring other people's homes, but I started panicking when someone in chat said they wanted to see my home. My friend Space Rug tried to convince this guy that I built the other homes in this village and not this one, but I don't think he was convinced. However, this guy told me that he was a worse builder than me, which made me feel a whole lot better. That was until I found out he lived inside this gigantic Pokeball that looked absolutely beautiful. This maniac even plans to make it much bigger than it already is, so I can't wait to see that. Now after that, I decided to check out just one more base. This place was pretty odd looking, but it definitely looked like they had a fun time building it. Would love to check out more, but I have a goal to finish. I was over 9% done with the decks, so I only had a little bit left to go. After catching a couple more Pokemon in the desert, I had finally completed my first goal of completing 10% of the Pokédex. When I checked the PC, it didn't really look like 10%, but I forgot about evolutions and that I traded a couple Pokemon. After that, I typed slash kits to claim my trainer kit and was happy to get my rare candies. I also checked out the other Pokédex rewards, and it kinda motivated me to complete it, but it also sounds like a huge pain. Now that that's done, it's time for me to focus on maxing out my team. The absolute best way to do that is to fight the battle tower since the trainers are very high leveled and they give you a ton of rare candy. I'll also need to teach my Pokemon new moves and EV train them as well. However, teaching Pokemon new moves comes at a very hefty price. I need 4 diamonds to teach a move and I can buy them from the server shop, but they cost about 2500 each. However, that's the price I gotta pay for having a move tutor conveniently in the Poke Center. I taught Mamoswine Superpower, and I taught Charizard Dragon Pulse, which in total costed $20,000. I also browsed through the server shop for some TMs and CRs as well. I bought Solar Beam for Charizard, which he seemed very happy about, and I bought Dragon Dance for Tyranitar. Now that I have the moves that I want, it's time to do some EV training. 
EV training basically raises your Pokemon stats, but the way you train depends on what nature and moves you give to your Pokemon, as well as their base stats. If I want to check Lucario's EVs, I can type slash EVS1, and from here I can see what EVs I should get rid of. To find out how to properly build a Pokemon, I use a website called PokemonDB, which I'll leave in the description. Speaking of building your Pokemon, there's a feature called the PokeBuilder that allows me to edit every aspect of my Pokemon. If I was a competitive person, I would only use a few of these features though. I would only change their ability, their IVs, and their nature. But for fun, I would probably change their size, make them shiny, and change their form. And by forms, I mean the custom ones, not the mega ones since I can get those easily. Everything in the Poke Builder is expensive though, but I do plan on getting high jump kick on Lucario. It's by far his best move, but it's going to cost a lot of tokens. Now back to the EV training, I can get rid of the stats Lucario doesn't need using berries that I can get from the ground, from dens, and from the shop. The ones from the shop are mad expensive, so make sure to never throw away these berries if you find them. After that, I focused on training Lucario's attack EVs and his speed EVs. Once I finished EV training him, I went ahead and did the same process for the rest of my team. Once that was done, it was then time to level up my team some more. I was fortunate enough to find a rock gym, which is by far the best gym for training since it has like a thousand trainers. It's also one of the easier gyms, but since all the Pokemon are equal to my highest, it was very challenging for me. It took years to get to the top, but I did get a lot of levels. Now the gym leader was definitely the hardest thing I've dealt with so far. It also didn't help that my Charizard was completely useless here. I lost to this guy so many times that I had to swap my Lucario out for Flygon. I wanted to swap out my Charizard, but Lucario's high level made everything so much harder. The battle went a lot better this time, but then it all came down to my Flygon against the Pseudo Wudo. Somehow my Flygon ended up beating him, and I got my first gym badge. That gym was extremely difficult, and it was a regular Pixmon gym too. I've heard that the server gym that I'll be taking on is 5 times harder than that. I'm not sure how we're going to beat it, but I'm sure my team and I will find a way. But for now, it's time that we finally take on the battle tower. The battle tower has 4 floors, 3 trainers on each floor that'll give me some decent rewards. The rewards include rare candy, money, and tokens that will increase with each floor. That sounds fantastic, but with each floor, the Pokemon become harder and their levels become higher. That is why I waited till all my Pokemon were over level 70 before taking on the tower. Now I have a physical attack team except for Charizard, which is really bad against the burn effect. I'll have to watch out for that, but I think if I just set up the right counters, I should be fine. However, I do have to be careful of water types. I have a Luxray to counter them, but sometimes they're just too much for him to handle. It's times like these where I wish I still had my Lombre. The only reason I swapped him out for Charizard was so that I could have a Pokemon to fly around with. However, my Charizard is a great counter to grass types, which my Mamoswine is not. Although, he is amazing against the pseudo legendaries like Salamence and Garchomp, so he's got that going for him. Anyway, I made it to the top of the tower where there were level 100 trainers that gave 10 rare candy and 100 tokens. These battles were going to be insanely hard, so I bought 20 rare candy to level out the playing field. I also bought some life orbs to maximize my team's damage. And let's not forget about the max revives in case of an emergency. The first battle started off easy with my Charizard burning things up, but then things became hard when they brought out the water types. I had to revive my Luxray three times to take care of these guys. Thankfully though, his last Pokemon was a Colossal, who was really easy to beat. The next trainer had some really good Pokemon on his team, and I was terrified when he brought out a Dragapult. Mamoswan was able to take care of him though, and with one final Ice Shard, I took out his best Pokemon. I then used Charizard to demolish this Ferrothorn, and used Luxray to take down this Primarina, as well as do massive damage against this Arcanine. Lucario did the honor to finish him off, and weakened this Dusclops for Tyranitar to do his thing. Now there is only one trainer left in this tower, but it looks like I only have 5 minutes left to beat him before the server restarts. Things started off really easy since fighting is a great counter to Rock and Dark types. As soon as I saw the Dragapult though, I immediately brought out Mamoswine to get rid of that nuisance. He then brought out Aegislash who Tyranitar easily countered, also taking out a Rotom as well. He then did a good chunk of damage to Dusclops, but then became too weak to fight anything else. Luxray took care of everything from there, and I defeated the Battle Tower with 3 minutes to spare. I then used the last rare candies I got to get my team to level 100. It wasn't quite enough though, but I remembered to claim the trainer kit again and got some rare candies from that. 
My team is finalized, fully evolved, and all level 100, and I couldn't be happier. I still have two goals left to complete though, one of them being that I have to defeat five different trainers. I decided to fight one of the mods on the server, and he had a very interesting team. Not only did he have an Ash Green Ninja, but he also had three Urshifus. I was able to beat all his Kung Fu Bears, but his Greninja was too fast for my Tyranitar. Sad times indeed, but I did get into a battle with this other dude. He takes out his Garchomp, so I take out my Ice type, but then he takes out his Electric type which does no damage to Mamoswine. He also takes out his Heatran, so I'm thinking he forgot Mamo is a Ground type. This guy then pulled out a Galarian Articuno, which is a Psychic type, so I use my Dark type against him. This guy had another Legendary on his team, and used a fighting move that destroyed Tyranitar. This was hard to deal with, but he is a water type, so I was able to do a lot of damage with Luxray. Thankfully Lucario knows extreme speed, so I took him out pretty quickly. The move helped to wrap up this battle, letting me complete my second goal of defeating 5 trainers. My last goal is to defeat the Shaft Gym, but before I go there, I have a few things I need to do. I got a lot of tokens from the battle tower, so now I can purchase High Jump Kick from my Lucario. This move does a lot of damage, but he can also hurt himself with it, so I gotta be careful. I'm also on the hunt to find a Lucario boss so that I can get his Mega Stone. It's going to take a while to find him, but in the meantime, I did find a Deancey boss. Even though my Pokemon were maxed out, it's still an ultimate boss, so the battle was not easy. Now I was getting a little frustrated that he wasn't spawning, so I checked his P-Wiki, and he apparently spawned in a slightly different biome than the one I was in. I eventually found the biome and then watched some anime because I knew it would take a while for him to spawn. After hours and hours of waiting, I did end up finding him, but I wasn't too thrilled to see that he was an ultimate. As soon as this guy one shot my Lucario, I had a feeling this was going to be an epic battle until Charizard took him out with one flamethrower. I got his Mega Stone and I also got an Adamant Orb which is kind of an insane drop. But more importantly, with a click of a button, my Lucario became so much stronger and is now an absolute beast. However, I'm not done yet because there's still one more Mega Stone I really want to get. I came to the Mesa so that I could look for a Tyranitar boss. Even though I have a Lucario to counter him, it's still scary since he's one of the strongest Mega Bosses. I'm also hoping that he's not an ultimate boss because that would make things 10 times worse. However, one thing I've learned throughout this playthrough is that you can't always get what you want. If my Lucario cannot one-shot him, then realistically, it's just over for me. However, I greatly underestimated the counter and was happy to get his Mega Stone as well as an Ultra Cronium Z. I don't have a Necrozma, so I figured I might as well sell this on the GTS. This is actually my first time making a video with other players, so I don't really know much about the GTS. I asked one of the helpers for some tips, and he told me to put it up for auction at 85,000 for a duration of 2 days. I've now put up my first item on the GTS, and I hope someone buys it. The helper was a little concerned as to why I didn't keep it, and to be honest, I was a little concerned too. But it doesn't matter anymore, because it's now time to finally take on the Shaft Gym. I typed slash warps and headed over to the gyms. People say that this is the easiest of the gyms, but that does not mean that it's easy. I entered the gym area, which appeared to be a giant mine, so I assumed that there would be some steel types. This is it. Everything that I've been through, everything that I've trained for, all comes down to this. First Pokemon up was a level 120 Kangaskhan, but I was able to quickly defeat him with a high jump kick and extreme speed. Lucario hanged on with a focus sash I gave him and did a little bit of damage to Landorus before he died. I then brought out Mamoswine and killed this Landorus with an Ice Fang and then did some damage to Conkozer. I then used my flying type against his fighting type and caused him to flinch with an air slash. After using another air slash, he then brought out Keldeo. I swapped Charizard out for Gyarados and did an insane amount of damage with Bounce while also paralyzing him. I finished him off with another Bounce and out came Melmetal. I kept making him flinch with Waterfall and then tried to burn him to death. After one more flamethrower, he brought out his Magirna who I ended up burning as well. This was his last Pokemon, so I brought out the big boy and decided to Mega Evolve him. I thought he could finish him off, but it wasn't enough and I started panicking. But thankfully, Luxray was able to kill him, defeating the gym leader and earning me the Shaft Badge, helping me complete my third and final goal. To celebrate the victory, I told everyone to come to spawn and throw out all of their Pokemon. I usually play Pixelmon on a boring, lonely, single player world, so it was nice to finally play with other people and fight actual trainers. 
If you guys want to join the fun, you can use the IP on the screen or just follow my steps in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.